Property Commission for American Studies, and he is the author of a book titled Return to Order, Where We've Been, How We Got Here, and Where We Need to Go. John, welcome to today's issues. Pleasure to be with you. Well, now, the the theme of your book uh, is that um, America is in big trouble. Nobody had to write a book you know, to say that everybody, everybody knows we were trillions in debt. We got high unemployment. We just, everything seems to be going wrong uh, in that department. But the theme of your book is that there was for most of American history, a dominant economic model. And uh, why don't you just kind of uh, briefly explain, we're going to try to unpack that uh, over the next uh, 20 minutes or so. Uh, let us, uh, let us know what that dominant economic model was. Okay, well, what we're seeing, what we've seen in our economy from the United, uh, in, in throughout our history is that there are periods where it, the economy becomes frenzied and out of control. And uh, it's, uh, it's what I call in the book frenetic intemperance. It's this lack of control that now has turned our economy into a credit card economy where everyone has to have, in, have everything instantly right now regardless of the consequences and how this, this has thrown the economy out of balance, and we continually need to go back to the fundamentals of family, community, and faith that normally serve to, serve to keep economy in balance. Uh, that's what a return to order is all about. It's the, it looks at the causes of our present economic crisis and then uh, proposes real solutions based on timeless principles. Well, John, if we go back to the beginning, to, to the beginning of America, you talk about an organic Christian society. Uh, two questions about that. Number one, just tell us what you mean by organic Christian society, and is that essentially what the founders intended? Is that what we had in the beginning? Well, by organic Christian society, I mean a society that um, is very much suited to a, toward our human nature. It's based on, um, it's rooted in community, you know, family, and faith. It's full of natural leaderships and social ties. It's very much has has to do with our Christian ideals and the idea of divine providence. You know that providence provides for us. I, I mean, this is the this is the, the idea of an organic Christian society. It's where people are treated like human beings and not machines. You know, and um, as you say, I think this was very much already in the. Uh, in the ideas of, of the founding, and, um, you know, we had a lot of those things in our society. But as this frenzy, as this frenetic intemperance increases, this type of society is put, put in the sidelines. Well, what are some of the other uh, historical examples of, because you, you said we, we go through this frenetic intemperance, and, and, I, and I, I like the way you explain that, where, um, and, and correct me if I'm putting words in your mouth, uh, but it's it, we don't want to put off, you know, we all want immediate gratification, and we become, you said, a, a credit card economy where we can uh, we can consume now and pay later. Um, but what what are some of the other historical periods where that happened? Because this all seems new, and, and I guess these kinds of things always seem new to the people living through them. But this kind of seems new to me. But you're saying there've been other periods. You're talking like the the Roaring Twenties and things like that. I mean. Right. I mean, if you look at the history of the country, and I talk about this a lot in Return to Order, is that, um, you know, we have uh, periods throughout our history, especially from the Industrial Revolution on, where there are these, you know, these frenzies, these um, bo- uh, booms and busts, these crashes. Uh, there are even books of, of authors who have written, you know, just outlining the crashes of 1907, of 18 to, uh, 1876. I mean, just one after another. Uh, they were not nearly as bad as they are today, but they were there, where you know it just goes up and down. You just see that it, it, you don't have that constancy that comes from Christian life and, and temperance. And so, yeah, the, the Roaring Twenties uh, would definitely be an example. And then in our times, uh, it's pretty. It gets pretty. It gets really, really bad. We're talking with John Horvat. He's the author of Return to Order. Subtitled From a Frenzied Economy to an Organic Christian Society, Where We've Been, How We Got Here, and Where We Need to Go, published just recently by York Press. 
Uh, John, one of the, it seems one of the implications of, of the argument you're making in the book is that the current tendency to separate morality, maybe, maybe what we call private morality or personal morality, those decisions, the right and wrongs of life, to put them off in one, one side, and then economic issues such as the budget and the deficit and what kind of government we're going to be. It seems like here in the 21st century, we've almost completely separated government from morality. And if I'm getting you right, you're saying that uh, those two things really belong together in order to have a, both a healthy society and a healthy economy. Am I saying that sort of the way you're saying it in the book? No, very much the way I say it. <laughs> right on, you're right on target. I mean, even Adam Smith was a moral philosopher. He wasn't just an economist. Uh, they, the two used to be together, very much together. From uh, you know, for, but so let's say from the modern period on, they they simply just put economy in one one field and morality in the other, and we need to put them back together. There's there's really no way you can keep them apart. Uh, if you don't, if you keep them apart, you'll run into economic problems like we are today. Ed Vitagliano with Ray Pritchard um, hosting today's issues, the program you're listening to on American Family Radio, the talk network. We are talking with John Horvat, who's a researcher and speaker. He's head of the Tradition, Family, and Property Commission for American Studies and author of the book, Return to Order. Um, John, let me ask you this. This uh, this separation that's uh, going on that, that you're saying, it, probably at least in part, is responsible for the economic problems we're having uh, is, uh, again, in part due to the separation of morality and our Christian heritage from things, Ray mentioned government, the economy. Uh, when did that start? Um, and, you know, in, in our minds, at least, in the uh, pro-family uh, movement, we, we see that as you know, the last half of the 20th century where secularism really takes root, the sexual revolution, so on and so forth. But uh, when, in your perspective, when did this really begin to uh, peel apart? Well, I, I trace it uh, to the onset of the Industrial Revolution. I'm not against industry or technology, but when, that, when the Industrial Revolution came, which was in England around the mid 18th century. Uh, it introduced the idea of money, the rule of money, that money was the most important thing, and introduced this inter intemperance into society. And what I talk about in, in Return to Order is saying that we need to go away from this rule of money and go to what I call a rule of honor, you know, where you're not just a number in the system, where people see what they do as a profession and not a paycheck. Uh, where honor is more important than money and character is more important than capital. And so we need to go back to that, that concept that was really thrown out by, uh, gradually by this, 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 just this overwhelming industrialization where money really, really took over in society. You know, John, your book is, it, it is massive in the good sense that it covers it covers so many areas of, of modern life. It's a, it, it's a penetrating analysis. I want to just ask you a question. And, and honestly, I'm, I'm just looking at the different chapters here, but I want to ask you something about Chapter 10, the consequences of the abuse of technology. And, you know, you turn the page there. Instead of charts and graphs, there's a picture of three boys on cell phones. And, it, I mean, <laughs> you know, this could have been taken anywhere, any town, any city, any village in America. I mean, it's a common sight. I mean, they're not looking around. They're not talking to each other. They're just looking at their cell phones, texting or playing games or something. Right, right, right. Uh, I mean, they you, say that uh, the average cell phone, the iPhone user, you looks at his phone every six minutes. And uh, uh, a technology is meant to serve man, and we're serving technology now. And that's, I think, it's an imbalance. It's an intemperance that, uh, you know, is, 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 really, is really tragic. You, you, you know, I, I, I agree with you, not 100%, 1,000%, but my question <laughs> is, and this is really more in the in the realm of a confession, John. I mean, you know, I live on my, my I, in front of me, right now, in front of me, within arm's reach, I've got an iPhone, I've got an iPad, I've got my laptop open. We live in a wired world. How, how do we return to order 
in a in a wired world where it doesn't seem easily possible to roll back the clock? What do we do? Well, I mean, I I do I don't really want to turn back the clock, but reset the clock. You know, it's okay. just saying, well, there are certain principles there that we need to realize that uh, you know, family is important. Family, community, faith are important. And much more important than those things, and it's not an easy it's not an easy decision that one has to make, but we we all can look at our personal lives and, and see these things that are mentioned in the book, like technology, like materialism, like individualism, and say, "Well, how can I change in that from that perspective it's not an easy it's not an easy thing I mean, but it it can be done it's something that uh, when I talk about organic Christian society, you know it, it deals with those things that uh, those those things that are very important that uh, uh, as you know as the situation gets worse are n- now much more attractive. Talking to John Hor- Horvat, who's a researcher and speaker, he's author of the book Return to Order. John, let me ask you this: uh, a lot of what's in your book has to do with community, has to do with family, has to do with these ideas. Um, and yet America seems to be a nation built, uh, or at least in my lifetime, the emphasis has been on the individual. Everything is about the individual, what you want, what you can attain to, almost a hyper-individualism. What part does that play in this uh, frenetic uh, economy, this frenetic intemperance? Uh, are we a nation that has so lost sight of uh, communal bonds that we're just now, everything has to satisfy me. Uh, is that, is that part of the problem? I know you talk about the implosion of individualism in your book. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, individualism is, is that idea that I am the center of the world and that I need to, you know, I, uh, everything revolves around me. And so I, I'm it. And that's opposed to individuality, which is says, well, I'm part I'm an individual that has something to contribute to society and that I, can, I should develop everything in myself to be what I can be, what I can be and what I can be helped by society. And so there is a, a, a clash of things. It's something very modern. The modern philosophies, not only in the United States but all over the world, have stressed this idea of individualism and this, this bad idea of individualism. And it's, yeah, I think it's, it's wreaked havoc upon the nation with, with psychological problems, with stress, with all sorts of, uh, you know, things we see today that, that can be explained by this, this, uh, this very tragic idea of, you know, well, I'm the center of the world and I have to fight against the whole world and, and I don't need the help of others, and we do. We need the help of others. We need the help of God. We need the help of our communities. John, you say this is a kind of, uh, and I'm in chapter 18 now, you say this is a kind of salvific, uh, a salvation-related debate, uh, and you, you, you subtitle it Becoming a Nation, Becoming a People. Uh, you know, again, some people would go, well, you know, we, we keep our theology over here. You can't see me, but I'm stretching out my left hand. <laughs> and we keep our economy and our government and our politics over here. I'm stretching out my right hand. But you're saying, again, we got to bring them together. What is this salvific debate we need to have? Well, uh, in that particular chapter, I talk about how um, the model of our American way of life is very much along the line of a corporation. You know, if, if everything's going fine, I'm happy. I, I'm, everybody gets along. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, prosperity, you know, it's just absolutely great. But when the, when the going gets tough, they say, well, I'm going to get off this ship. I'm going to sell out my shares. I just, you know, I, 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 it's, it's me, you know, that's involved, so I'm the only important thing. And that we have an alternative from that point of view, from the model being a corporation, where the model of, for our nation should be that of the family, where we, everyone chips in when the, when the going's rough, and that we need to make this decision to, to treat our nation like a family, that we are, you know, that everyone has, we're on the same boat. And we all have to uh, contribute to it. And I think that's the type of decision we're going to have to make as this crisis gets worse. You know, whether we're going to just simply leave the, and try to, to escape, like a lot of people will, or to come together like a family and resolve the problem as it needs to be resolved. 